Did you know that electric cars have been around for over a century? That's right, long before sleek, high-tech designs and fast charging stations, electric cars were rolling through cities and streets, offering an alternative to steam engines or four-strong carriages. While their popularity has surged in recent years, their early history is just as fascinating. So what led to the creation of electric cars and why did they disappear for so long? Stay tuned to find out as today we explore the rise and fall of the first generation of electric cars. I'm your host Ryan Sokesh and you're watching It's History. Let's start with the basics. In a time before cars, could move without animals. Horses were the backbone of cities, powering wagons, carriages, and delivering services. The idea of a vehicle that didn't need an animal seemed impossible, until the invention of the steam engine, of course. In 1803, Richard Trevithick introduced a steam-powered carriage in London. This was one of the first horseless carriages, and while it marked a significant breakthrough, early steam vehicles were far from perfect. They were noisy, slow, and required constant maintenance. Despite these challenges, his invention inspired others to dream big. By the 1830s, electricity entered the conversation, and this is when Scottish inventor Robert Anderson created a rudimentary electric carriage powered by galvanic cells, a precursor to modern batteries. This was an incredible leap forward, as it eliminated the need for steam or animals. However, Anderson's invention had a significant limitation. It couldn't be recharged, so it wasn't practical for everyday use. Other inventors soon built upon these early experiments. Of course, there was Volta, known for his voltaic pile, which was the first reliable battery, and provided the foundation for many electrical innovations. Meanwhile, Thomas Davenport and his wife Emily patented a direct current motor in 1837, a device that could power machinery. These were the breakthroughs that set the stage for electric cars to emerge. The electric car truly began to take shape in the 1880s. In England, Thomas Parker built one of the first electric cars in 1884. Parker's design included rechargeable batteries, solving the problem that plagued Robert Anderson's earlier work. This innovation made electric cars much more practical, as they no longer needed to rely on single-use power sources. Meanwhile, across the Atlantic, William Morris introduced the electric car to the US in 1890. Morrison's car, powered by 24 batteries, could travel 50 miles at a speed of 20 miles per hour. This took the world off guard, and his invention was showcased at the 1893 Chicago's World Fair, where it drew widespread attention, marking a turning point as more people began to see electric cars as a viable alternative to traditional transportation. In 1894, yet another invention arrived in the form of the Electrobat, a vehicle designed in Philadelphia. The Electrobat wasn't sleek, it was heavy and slow, but it had an important role to play. Built for taxi services in New York, the Electrobat provided a cleaner and quieter option compared to horse-drawn cabs that dominated the urban transportation at the time. Its success showed that electric vehicles could be practical for commercial uses. By the early 20th century, electric cars were thriving. They offered a range of benefits that made them appealing, especially in cities. Unlike steam engines, which needed time to warm up, electric cars started instantly. Their motors were nearly silent, making them far more pleasant to drive and be around. And they were clean, without exhaust fumes or the mess of animal waste, providing a more hygienic solution for crowded urban areas. In the US, electric vehicles became especially popular among urban elites. Wealthy individuals appreciated their smooth performance and convenience, and electric cars quickly became a status symbol. By 1900, electric cars accounted for about one-third of all vehicles on the road in the United States. This was the beginning of what many called the golden age of electric cars. Major manufacturers like Columbia Electric, Detroit Electric, and Studebaker capitalized on this momentum, producing cars that combined style, functionality, and innovation. One of the most notable electric car manufacturers was Studebaker, originally a carriage company which entered the electric car market in 1902. While their vehicles were innovative, the company eventually shifted to gasoline-powered cars in 1912, recognizing the growing dominance of 
internal combustion engines. Another key player was Columbia Electric, a company known for producing some of the most luxurious cars of the time. Their flagship model, the Columbia Broom, cost $3,500, a small fortune at the time. In 1903, the Columbia Electric car even completed a 250-mile journey from Boston to New York in just 23 hours, showcasing its reliability and endurance. Now, perhaps the most successful electric car manufacturer of the era was Detroit Electric. Founded in 1907, the company produced vehicles with a range of up to 100 miles per charge. Detroit Electric cars were particularly popular among women as they eliminated the need for crank starting, which was required for gasoline engines. In a particularly bold move, Detroit Electric took its cars on a photo tour of Washington's mountain roads in 1919, proving their durability and rugged terrain. Despite their early success, electric cars began to decline in the 1920s. Several factors contributed to their downfall. The most significant was the rise of gasoline-powered cars. Henry Ford's Model T, introduced in 1908, was produced on an assembly line, drastically reducing its cost. While electric cars remained expensive, the Model T became affordable for the average American, tipping the scales in favor of internal combustion engines. Another factor was the expansion of gasoline infrastructure. As gas stations spread across the country, refueling gasoline-powered cars became far easier than recharging electric vehicles. Additionally, electric cars had their limitations. Their range and speed were no match for gasoline-powered vehicles, which were better suited for long-distance travel. Then, the economic pressure of the Great Depression further sealed the fate of electric cars. Luxury goods like electric vehicles became harder to sell, and many manufacturers went out of business. Detroit Electric, one of the last holdouts, shipped its final car in 1939, marking the end of a very interesting era. Well, this first generation of early electric cars had long since disappeared from the roads, their legacy lives on in museums across the US. These institutions preserved the history and ingenuity of the vehicles. America's Car Museum in Tacoma, Washington showcases Studebaker and other early electric pioneers. The California Auto Museum in Sacramento features several early electric models, allowing visitors to see the craftsmanship up close. And the National Automobile Museum in Reno, Nevada, houses examples of Columbia and Detroit electric cars, keeping their stories alive for future generations to enjoy. The history of electric cars is a testament to human ingenuity and ambition. From Robert Anderson's early experiment to the rise and fall of Detroit Electric, these vehicles shaped the future of transportation in ways few could have imagined. Though they have disappeared for much of the 20th century, their story remains an important chapter in automotive history. So it's surprising to consider that electric cars aren't just a modern invention, rather they're part of a long-standing and complex history. A history that I'm not too personally familiar with, especially when considering that I drive a diesel. You can let me know what you guys drive in the comment section below. Otherwise, don't miss our episode about the flying ship by clicking right here. I hope you'll consider subscribing. You see guys, I'm begging you, you know, help me hit that 700,000. All right, till next time, I'm Ryan Sokesh, signing off.